In order to tackle climate change, scientists and governments need reliable data to understand how our planet is changing. This can be provided by ESA, which monitors our planet from space. With four EU Copernicus Sentinel missions and four Earth Explorer missions in orbit, ice thickness and coverage, deforestation, soil moisture, sea level and ocean surface temperature as well as other essential climate variables can be measured. These satellites have global coverage, revisiting the same region every few days, therefore providing a good understanding of the health and behavior of our planet and how it's affected by climate change. In turn, this offers decision makers key information for mitigating strategies and policies. Frequency and consistent observations of our environment are very important if we want to give decision makers the key into their hand on where humankind has to change practices, where we have to be mitigating for encroaching impacts on our environment. Satellites can show us how the world has changed. Like here in the Camargue, France, where the coastline has retreated more than 200 metres in the last 20 years. In the 1980s, sea walls were constructed here in a failed attempt to stop the rising water. Back then, sea level was rising, but more slowly than it is now. Over the last five years, records show that the rise in sea level is accelerating. Soon, part of this delta will be lost to the sea. And what is happening here is happening in many parts of the globe. Worldwide, more than 370 million people live less than five meters above sea level. Over a hundred megacities such as New York or Tokyo are near the water. All are at risk. Satellite data gives us the facts so that we can prepare ourselves for the rising tide and protect coastline populations. This data is also used in ESA's climate change initiative where ESA scientists preserve and work with long-term datasets going back to 30 years and more to get an even better understanding of climate change. Thanks to satellites, we have evidence that the planet is in danger. Now it is up to people on Earth to take the necessary measures in time. The key for sustaining life on Earth might come from space. What you see here on this graph is the CO2 concentrations uh, of the atmosphere over the last 800,000 years. And you see that these values are going up and down uh, in different uh, phases. You see on the, the blue lines here are indicating ice ages, and the orange lines here are indicating periods between ice ages or periods where it's much warmer. But you also see that over the last 800,000 years, the value was always below 300 parts per million, and suddenly, since the last century, it goes up very steep towards 400 parts per million or even beyond. Uh, and this is what we, what we have today. This is the increase of carbon dioxide uh, drastically increasing over the last uh, 100 years caused by human beings.
Here are the climate models planned for the future year done in 2016 it presents the dangers of climate change with a 4 degrees Celsius degree increase in global temperature but a terrifying new climate models warn of 6 to 7 degrees Celsius of warming by 2100 if emissions not slashed. New climate models unveiled by French researchers Tuesday showed Earth's average temperature could rise at terrifying 6.5 to 7.0 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels by the end of the century if dramatic action is not immediately taken to slash carbon emissions. The findings, presented at a press conference in Paris, suggest the planet may be warming significantly faster than scientists previously believed as the world's major economies continue to burn fossil fuels at unsustainable rates. Unfortunately, our global failure to implement meaningful action on climate change over recent decades has put us in a situation where what we need to do to keep warming to safe levels is extremely simple, Joe Airy Rogel, an associate professor at Imperial College London, told AFP. Global greenhouse gas emissions need to decline today rather than tomorrow, and global CO2 emissions should be brought to net zero. The new models are expected to form part of the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's sixth assessment report, which is set to be published in 2021. The IPCC's fifth assessment report, published in 2014, presented a worst-case scenario of 5 degrees Celsius of warming by the end of the century. Olivier Boucher, head of the Institut Pierre-Simon Laplace Climate Modeling Centre in Paris, which developed one of the new models, said the latest data provide a better look at where the climate is heading without drastic changes to global energy production. We have better models now, Boucher told AFP on Tuesday. They have better resolution, and they represent current climate trends more accurately, Bloomberg reported that just one of the updated climate models used by the researchers allowed for the global temperature increase to remain below 2 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. That model assumed global carbon neutrality by 2060. The worst-case scenario of 6.5 to 7.0 degrees Celsius of warming assumed continued economic expansion driven by growth of fossil fuel production. The IPCC warned last year that even limiting planetary warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century, the goal of the Paris Climate Agreement, would not prevent many of the disastrous effects of the climate crisis. Warming of 6.5 to 7.0 degrees Celsius would be catastrophic. Higher warming would allow less time to adapt and mean a greater likelihood of passing climate tipping points, such as thawing of permafrost, which would further accelerate warming, said Boucher. In an email to Common Dreams, Penn State University climate scientist Michael E. Mann sounded a note of caution about the dire scenarios predicted by the new models. Some earlier versions of the models appeared to underestimate climate sensitivity somewhat, said Mann, and I suspect that some of these more recent versions are actually overestimating it a bit, I suspect, when all is said and done, we're probably looking at something in the range of 3 to 4 degrees Celsius and no higher, at least for near-term warming, Mann added. If we allow the warm ing to persist for centuries, then other long-term positive feedbacks vicious cycles could kick in, giving us substantially more warming.